Hey fam, it's ICFIC Studio, and because I have just recently visited Japan, I have read so much Japanese books and I will be updating my reading journal. So before we get into things, I'll just do a little flip through of my reading journal. If you haven't yet, you can check out my 2023 reading journal setup. This notebook is actually from the September 2022 Art Journal of Subscription box, which was my favorite one ever. So the notebook size is B5 and it has a lot of room for me to include quotes and really longish reviews for the books that I've read. And if you want 10% off eligible Archer and all of items, feel free to use my affiliate code ICStudio10 through the link below. So have you read any of these books or are they in your TBR? Let me know in the comments. First up, category is manga horror. I first came across Junji Ito when I was browsing on Netflix early this year and I saw this series called Japanese Tales of Macabre, or was it Macabre Tales of Japanese? I don't know, something like that. But anyway, I was very intrigued, so I watched all of the episodes. And because I don't buy books, I was very delighted to find most of his manga novels in my local library, so I borrowed everything that I could. I must say, judging from the books that I've read before, like Haruki Murakami and Ruth Ozeki, Japanese books have a uniquely weird vibe. So Junji Ito's novels, I would describe them as grotesque and it leaves a weird bitter taste in my mouth. It's very unsettling, definitely creepy. So this will be my setup for Junji Ito's books. Despite them being horror manga novels, I'm going to still use my vintage stationery. So this will probably end up looking like a horror vintage page, if that makes sense. Because the main vibe or overall theme of my reading journal is dark spooky academia, might as well stick to that. And because I don't really want to spend too much time or too much effort on these spreads, I'm going to use my two printers. So this is my paper ink printer, which I'm an affiliate of. I see 10 for 10% off through the link below. I am not an affiliate of Sprocket, but I like using this for sticky photos. So anyway, I'm just going to shut up for a little bit and let you watch my minimal Junji Ito spread in peace. So far, I've only read three out of the five books that I borrowed from the library and their ratings range from two and a half stars to three stars. After I finish one manga novel, it feels like I need to read something else as a palette cleanser because it's just so unsettling and gruesome that I need a break from it. I haven't read the last two books that I have, so I'll just leave a space for me to do once I finish reading. So other than horror manga, I've also been intrigued by mythology, horror stories, nonfiction, and of course, my favorite studio, Ghibli. I was actually contemplating buying this book because I have been so obsessed by Studio Ghibli movies for the past month that I have rewatched all of my favorites. And I also had a Studio Ghibli bullet journal theme, which was my, I think it was May or April. I think it was my May theme. So check that out if you have time or if you want. I am so in love with this book. I honestly did not read it from cover to cover, but I did read a bulk of the words. So in this book, you'll be able to read a lot of fun facts about the Studio Ghibli movies. Things like the origin of Studio Ghibli, the founders of Studio Ghibli, and if I say Studio Ghibli again one more time, I am going to jump off the window, lol, just kidding. I love how there's a little piece of trivia for every movie. And I was actually mind blown that Howl's Moving Castle was inspired by a book. And during my trip to Japan, I went a little bit crazy on the Studio Ghibli merchandise and I bought this little cute Ponyo keychain. And whenever I watch Studio Ghibli movies, I really love the presentation of the food. And when you read here, it just says the food simple, it's just bread and eggs. But they make it look really nice. Another thing that I love about Studio Ghibli movies is that they have different aesthetics and vibes. And another thing is that the world building in every single movie is on point. So I'm going to set up two whole pages for the four books that I have either read or currently reading. Previously, I would use two pages for one book, but I'm going to try and keep it simple and put four books in these two pages. Like my Junji Ito spread, I wanted to make this a little bit more simpler and minimal, so that is what we are sticking with. 
Because I wanted to learn about Japanese myths and folklore, I read The Japanese Myths, A Guide to Gods, Heroes, and Spirits. This book was very interesting, but also technical in a way that it mentioned a lot of names and eras and years, and I just couldn't keep up. But then again, maybe after one third of the way, it got into like spirits and ghosts and stuff, and that's what piqued my interest. I also love how this book included some photos, which kind of brought the visualizations to life, and I like that. A book that I'm currently reading right now is a collection of short Japanese horror stories. They still have the uniquely grotesque and creepy storylines, but not on the same level as Junji Ito's manga novels. And I decided to pick up a non-fiction book because why not? It is a self-help book which actually has things that I already know, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna finish this, but I'm gonna try. <laughs> Alright, so let's have a look at my Japanese book spreads. I particularly like how simple and minimal they are. So this is my Junji Ito page and I am still going to read Remina and Liminal Zone. I'll leave the reviews to later and I've got the four non-manga novels. Still currently reading these two and I'll fill the rest out once I finish. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any more Japanese books to recommend, Please leave them in the comments below and I shall see you in the next video.